What's going on guys? Antonio here. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up for me and let's get into it. All right, so we're on complex.com and they have released their second annual hip hop media power rankings list. They did the first one last year and uh, they've had some adjustments. Some new people have moved into positions and certain people have fell off the list. Let's actually get into it. Um, let's go through here. So this guy, Gabe P, is number 25. I do not listen to him, so I have no idea who this guy is. Uh, so I'm just going to skip over. Uh, but you guys can uh, put me on game for Gabe P. I don't know who he is. Uh, let's see. This guy also, Arshon Jawaid. I don't know who he is either. This guy I do know, Jason Lee, Hollywood Unlocked. This is the guy that is heavily plugged in with Rihanna. He also used to be, uh, he used to be heavily plugged in with Beyonce, but he said Beyonce got mad at him, but he still, he still tapped in with Rihanna and Rihanna's tapped in with Jay-Z. So maybe he, whatever issues he may have had with Beyonce can be solved because um, like I said, with the Rihanna thing, the first pictures of Rihanna's baby, uh, her first son were given to Jason Lee. He released those on the Hollywood unlock platform. And, and uh, there's also a picture. If you go to Jason Lee's personal Instagram, there's a picture of him, Rihanna, uh, ASAP Rocky. And I think both of their, children because Rihanna had another baby. So I think it's both of their children in there. But I saw that. I follow I follow the Hollywood Unlocked page and uh uh Jason Lee be getting it. So he he's dropped a few spots. I'm actually he but I know he's running for political office. So I'm not exactly he's not as plugged in on the hip hop stuff as he was say a year ago. But I saw he was running for office out in California. So maybe that that might be why he dropped a few notches. Uh, number 22, Adam 22 from No Jumper. He was 19 last year. And it's funny, Adam 22 is 22. So um, No Jumper's platform has kind of moved. They still cover hip hop, but they're not doing it the way they used to. So it seems like now it's more like a bunch of gang politics and stuff like that. And I'm not interested in that. I, I have no interest in, in gang stuff. I'm not a gang, gang member. Uh, Van Latham. Uh, I know Van Latham used to work for TMZ and now he works or he may not work at the ringer anymore. He was working for uh, what's the guy, Bill Simmons at the ringer after he, he got fired from TMZ. He's the one. I remember when Kanye West said that infamous slavery was a choice thing. When, when they TMZ interviewed him, Van was the one that was getting on him. He was checking him for that. Cause he was like, Whoa. And I mean, Kanye ended up apologizing for that. Cause he got a lot of backlash for that. Slavery was a choice thing, but that's why I know Van Latham from that was, that was years ago though. I, that was around the time when Trump became president the first time. But I remember Kanye said slavery was a choice. And, uh, Oh man, this is someone, that I know from watching DJ Academic stream. He's uh, he did a podcast with Academics when he was in New York uh, a couple months ago, and it was Trap Lord Ross and Adam Twenty Two, and they sat down and did a, a really good podcast with DJ Academics that I enjoyed watching. But uh, Academics is the one turned me on to this guy's content. So uh, Trap Lord Ross from the UK. He does these incredible documentaries. He did the King Von documentary, did a great one on uh, uh, NBA Young Boy. Uh, his content is fantastic. So I've been subscribed ever since Academics put me on to him. Uh, Nadeska, this is, again, someone I know through DJ Academics. She was the co-host on Everyday Struggle. Uh, she was still there when Joe Budden left the show. Sway Calloway. Sway Calloway is a legend. I know him from MTV. He's been on the boondocks. Yeah, Sway, Sway is, uh, you know, he's a legend. He was 23 last year. He is number 18, so he's moved up a few notches. Uh, let me see here. Angela Yee of The Breakfast Club. Now, she left The Breakfast Club, what was it, uh, a little over a year ago. And uh, she was 14 last year, so she's dropped down a few uh, uh, rankings to 17, but she's still in the top 25, so that's good. Uh, big boy, big boy, another legend. I remember, you know, watching hip hop in the uh, 90s. Big boy, it was big boy, it was Funk Master Flex. These are guys I used to see in hip hop videos all the time. And big boy was at least 300 pounds heavier than he is. He's super thin now. He might weigh about what 160, one. 
45, something like that. He's way thin now. I, and I and if I'm not mistaken, he said he did not have the lap band surgery. People was trying to get him to have the surgery. He just changed up his diet and everything and switched it up. But he's had some big moments. Uh, him and Kanye had a disagreement. He got kicked out of a a, a listening party Kanye was throwing, but they squashed all that. And when uh, Kanye put Vultures out a couple months ago, he did an exclusive interview with Big Boy. They, you know, and, and they explained why they had their little misunderstanding. So Big Boy, shout out to him. Angie Martinez, again, uh, formerly of Hot 97. Hot 97 was just everything. And I think she's at uh, uh, Power 105 now. It was her, Ed Lover, and Dr. Dre, all these guys that had been the old school guard at Hot 97. They all jumped ship and went over to Power 105. Uh, but Angie Martinez used to be at Hot 97. And she used to appear in rap videos and stuff. She actually rapped on a song with Lil' Kim and uh, I can't remember the other, uh, was it Missy Elliott and some of these other people. It was a... I think it was the ladies night video, but Angie Martinez was in that. You used to see her and like big Les from uh, rap city on BET. And all you see that they used to be in when I was, when I was a young in, in the nineties, that was uh, definitely someone I used to see all the time, but yeah, shout out to Angie Martinez. She did drop a few spots. Uh, let's go bootleg kid. Bootleg Kev is some, the only reason I know who bootleg Kev is, is because he dissed academics. Academics went in on him. And uh, then AD that used to be at No Jumper and now he's on what the community and fig community world. Uh, he's friends with academics. He's friends with Bootleg Kev. Uh, academics was interviewing AD. AD actually called Bootleg Kev while he was mid interview with academics. Uh, academics and Kev talked. They squashed everything. But the only reason I know who Bootleg Kev is is because he he dissed academics. So that's the only reason I know who he is. But I see he this is his. Uh, he wasn't on the list last year, but he's definitely on it now. And his platform is growing. Uh, Rory and Maul, formerly of the Joe Budden podcast, they weren't on the list last year, but this year they are. They're at number thirteen. Uh, you know, so or as again, these are two guys that have been into it with academics. <laughs> but obviously, like I said, I knew them before academics because I watched Joe Budden's podcast. But but then, you know, they they were going back and forth with academics and the whole deal. OK, this is Lil Yachty and Mitch, the Safe Space podcast. I like Lil Yachty's music, but I've watched his podcast. It don't do nothing for me. I got to be honest. Uh, but Lil Yachty got some bangers as a rapper that I did. I actually do like. Uh, but his podcast, it's like if I if I need to go to sleep, I'll put that joint on. I'm not going to hold you on that. But but uh, salute to Yachty, though. Keep getting your back. Uh, Safe Space podcast. They weren't on the list last year. They're on it this year at uh, what? Number 12. Uh, OK, now this one, this is a big fall off because Nori was in the top five last year. He was ranked fifth overall out of the top twenty five. Uh, drink champs was a hip hop stable, like especially those early years of drink champs. He had so many big viral moments. He had, he had Kanye on, he, um, the, the meme of 50 cent talking about Diddy offering to take him shopping happened on drink champs. He's like, he tried to take me shopping. <laughs> he just like, so that happened. Um, it's been a minute since I seen a, a real viral clip from Drink Champs. He's he's they're still doing their thing and they're getting paid, but it's I gotta be honest, I don't watch it the same as I used to because it just doesn't seem like the content is watered down. It don't it don't uh, appeal to me as much anymore. But I really like and respect Nori. But yeah, I can see why they dropped him down to eleven. Let me go up. Um, Nardwar. Now they had him at 22 last year. Nardwar is at 10. I always kept seeing this little nerdy white guy with the hat. He would always like he would pop up on every hip hop blog that I was saying he'd be you know, like they'll have him come up and like uh, talk to the Migos or something, you know, and I'd be like, who is this guy? But he's doing it. He's got almost four million YouTube. He's got over two million on his Instagram. He's getting paid. Let's not make no mistake. I'm not hating. He getting the bag. So um, I've only seen a couple. Like I said, I see a couple of little clips when he, you know, approaches these rappers. But I honestly do not consume his content like that. Number nine. This one surprised me. Gillian Wallow from Million Dollars Worth of Game. 
uh, they're signed to Barstool, uh, what Dave Portnoy's deal. Uh, but they they signed that huge, what, it was over like $25 million contract or whatever. It was a big multi-million dollar contract to stay at Barstool. Uh, Gillian Wallow, like I said, they were number four last year. They have dropped. They haven't had a big... They, they're doing interviews still and content, but they haven't really had a moment in about the last year. So I can understand the biggest thing I can remember is um, Gilly and Joe Budden were kind of going back and forth. But they they even squashed that. And Joe Budden went on the he, they went. He went on a million dollars worth of game a couple months ago. They there's no real issue there. But, yeah, I, that's the only thing I really remember. They haven't really had a real big moment in a while, but I'm sure it'll come. Uh, let's oh. Okay, hold up. So, okay, Anthony Fantano. This is another guy that I only know because he dissed academics. <laughs> this is this is someone that that's the only reason I know who he is is because he dissed academics. He was ranked 13 last year. He's obviously has a large YouTube presence, almost three million on YouTube. But the only reason I know who he is, and academics used to show this guy love. I used to. Um, I used to watch academics trick to twi uh, Twitch streams and academics would talk about maybe, we, I, you know, because the mainstream hip hop media is kind of compromised. Maybe I could get with some of the other hip hop YouTubers and we could create our own like media awards or whatever. And he was talking about like, obviously including no jumper in that Adam 22 and a Anthony Fantano was someone that he had talked about. He was like, yo, he was shouting him out. And then all of a sudden you start hearing Fantano was like, all right, academics a bozo. He's this. And he was just, a, and so now they, there's no, they're not cool at all now. So I was like that, but that's the only reason I know who he is. Ebro Darden from hot 97 Ebro in the morning. Now, this is definitely another academics op. I don't watch Ebro. And the only reason I know who he is now, now last, you know, is he, he said stuff about academics. His uh, co-host on Ebro in the morning, uh, Peter Rosenberg, who also works for WWE, has dissed academics. And uh, I remember academics and uh, Peter Rosenberg were wanting, you know, he Peter Rosenberg said he wanted to slap academics. And uh, academics, you know, went on the air and said, hey, man, let's lace them up. Let's get it going. And then uh, academics shared all the DMs. Peter Roseberg was like, yeah, I misspoke. I shouldn't have said that. And he tried to apologize and everything. But academics was like, yo, if you want to fight, let's do it. We can do it for charity or whatever, you know. So uh, but, yeah, that's the only reason I know Ebro was someone that academics had tried to get an interview with very early in his career. Uh, Ebro was like, nobody know you. You're just a guy on YouTube. Nobody knows who you are, and he wouldn't give him an interview. And then years later, academics he uh he was working for Complex, and he told his story. They were out in California, Complex Con, and Ebro was there. Uh, Peter Rosenberg was working for Complex as well. And uh, yeah, he saw Ebro, and he was talking about Ebro was trying to be nice to him and dap him up, and he was like, no, nah, you diss me. I'm cool with it now, bro. Don't you see me coming up? So you trying to be nice. So I always respected that Ac academics has kept the same thing, but it's always so funny. Um, Ebro just thinks he's being honest or whatever. He's being real. Now this one, um, I remember when the list came out last year and they had act, uh, um, DJ Vlad was ranked number nine. Academics was like, oh, they sleeping on act. Uh, um, they're, they're sleeping on Vlad. Vlad should at least be in the top five. He's got the largest hip hop platform on YouTube. Everybody else is second. Vlad has uh, Vlad had almost he's about to hit six million YouTube subscribers. There is no b bigger hip hop platform on YouTube than Vlad TV. No jumpers. Uh, they got over four million themselves. So they're, they're big. But he knows he's not doing the views and the numbers that DJ Vlad is. Vl DJ Vlad is on the come up. He's got a he's got a very anticipated interview with Tariq Nasheed that is dropping in the next few days. I saw him do that. So, uh, uh, Tariq Nasheed is uh, promoting his documentary microphone check. So I'm definitely going to check that out with Tariq Nasheed. They, they had kind of had some issues and they, uh, they squashed it and sat down for an interview. So I know this is going to do big numbers on his platform. Uh, Elliot Wilson, Elliot Wilson, rap radar, uh, loudspeakers network, the whole deal. Uh, Elliot Wilson is definitely, he used to work for, uh, with a uh, rap pages 
And uh, he used to be like one of the editors over there and the whole deal. This guy's been covering hip hop for what, about 30 years now. Just like I said, major influence. This guy, uh, he was eight, he was eighth last year. Him being number five, that makes sense. Uh, uh, Elliot Wilson is definitely in the conversations, at least behind the scenes and, and making a lot of viral clips that I always see on the different hip hop pages that I go to. All right, we had a small drop, but not very far for Charlemagne the God. Charlemagne the God, who is, of course, the A-Mike on The Breakfast Club. Uh, and uh, he used to be uh, he used to be uh, Whitney, Wendy Williams' uh, co-host on her old radio show. That's how I first saw Charlemagne the God. Um, they started filming Wendy Williams' radio show for VH1 show, and I started seeing That was like 20 years ago, and I started seeing Charlemagne the God on that. Uh, he got fired from Wendy Williams' show, went back to South Carolina, and then he worked his way back up to New York Radio, and that's where he you know, ended up getting on The Breakfast Club with DJ Envy and Angela Yee, and they've been number one for like multiple years in a row. Obviously, Angela, Angela Yee left The Breakfast Club last year, but yeah, Charlemagne the God, he was three last year. He's, only, he's still a top five. You cannot sleep on Charlemagne the God's influence. Kai Sinat. Now, this one surprised me. Kai Sinat, I understand why he's on the list. He was sixth last year. Kai Sinat is, you know, he's a streamer and he's got these young kids, but I don't really, I watch his stream. He's playing video games and he'll have rappers on, but I don't really consider him a hip hop platform, but he has a lot of rappers on. Um, he had Nicki Minaj, Nicki Minaj, uh, you know, he does these like 24 hour streams. Nicki Minaj came and spent the night at his house. Uh, Nicki Minaj offset. He's had 21 Savage, uh, you know, Drake calls into his stream all the time. So this, you know, cannot deny Kai Sinat is a name and got influence and stuff. Um, you know, I saw him uh, when well, he was on uh, was a night. Uh, was a nightcap with uh, Shannon Sharp and uh, Ocho Cinco a couple months ago after the what was the All Star Game, and Kaisenat played in the All Star Game, and I know uh, Shannon Sharp was like the celebrity coach, so they had Kaisenat called in on that. So yeah, I definitely see he definitely is moving the culture, but I don't strictly consider him hip hop, but he has a lot of hip hop people on. Matter of fact, academics has said that a lot of the record labels when they pay him to post on his Instagram, that they ask him to play clips of Kai Sinat reacting to their artists because he has that young demographic that they want. Kai is cool with the kids. So they want those, those kids, those young people that watch academics page to see someone else that they watch Kai Sinat reacting to one of their artists. So I understand why he's there, but I don't consider him strictly hip hop. All right. So this guy, Joe Budden is a legend. Joe Budden was number one last year, but he's number two last year. I mean, he's number two this year. He's he, he dropped a spot. So he's still he's still in the top two, but he's not number one this year. All right. So but yeah, Joe Budden definitely listen to Joe. I've been listening to Joe Budden's podcast since before it had a name. Remember, if if uh, you listen to Joe Budden's podcast, it used to be called I'll Name This Podcast Later, and now it's just the Joe Budden Podcast. I kind of miss the old I'll Name This Podcast Later, but a lot of people thought Joe was done when uh, when uh, Rory and Maul left the podcast. He replaced them dudes, and uh, he's doing way bigger numbers than he was doing when Rory and Maul was there, so can't hate on that. But let's, I, I need to give this gentleman his flowers he was he was number two last year mr livingston allen better known as dj academics the man graduated from rutgers university with a degree in biomathematics yes i've been listening to academics since 2013 war Chirac. he has rose to the number one position and a lot of it has to do with the Kendrick Lamar Drake beef. If you want to know what's going on in the Kendrick Lamar Drake beef, the number one place is academics. 
and even the other hip hop pages that are talking about it, they're using clips and discussing academic. Oh, academics is too far on Team Drake. He's not being fair to Kendrick. And then uh, Ak will say something nice about Kendrick, and they go, "Oh, he's dropping Drake. He's switching up on him." And, and you know, it's like it's so funny. And he's trying to he he's trying to be non biased. But I uh, salute to academics. I am a, a big fan of his. I've watched him get it for a long time, and so uh, yeah, this this makes sense. Uh, he he uh, posted this on his story that he had gotten the number one position on this and one of the things he said is this was you know that this number one was for the chat because he he's always you know if you if you know about what that scorpion is and the chat niggas you know what it is so if if you don't follow academics then you don't know what i'm talking about but you know what the scorpion and all that stuff mean if you follow academics uh, which i have for a long time but uh yeah over five million on instagram 1.6 on x uh you know he's got He's got his main channels got almost three million. His King Academics channel is about to hit a million. He's got another channel. The Academy has got three or four hundred thousand on that. So he's building these these uh, different platforms. up. But Academics is definitely they're writing about him in Billboard. They're writing about him on Rolling Stone. This is I mean, Academics is definitely moving and shaking. Uh, 2024, this Drake Kendrick Lamar beef would not, um, he's got a stamp in it. Drake uh, used his audio in uh, the push up song, uh, and I think what was it, 616 in Euphoria? I mean, uh, 616 in, in, uh, was it 616 in Toronto or 616 in, La I think 616 in Los Angeles, the Kendrick Lamar song that was responded to Drake. Uh, he mentioned academics and he said academics seem compromised on that track. Uh, and uh, the only other person that has been mentioned uh, that's a hip hop influencer is Joe Button. What was it uh, by Drake in the tailor made freestyle? He mentioned Joe Budden's name and, and Ak even said that because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of other hip hop media pages that are dissing academics, wanting him to to uh, go off on them on stream so they can get get some more viewership. And he was like, y'all going to have to take a back seat. The only two people that have gotten mentioned in this beef are me and Joe Budden. So y'all just sit back and get your popcorn ready and I'm going to uh, keep keep getting the spotlight right now so yeah this is it academics number one congratulations to him uh if you like academics if you don't like academics or if you are surprised by anybody else that made the list or didn't make the list get in the comments let's talk about it we're on the road to 3000 i need you i want you follow me facebook Instagram, I'm on X, I'm on Threads, all at Akari Press. Type in AkariPress.com. It will take you to my comic book brand, Way of the Gun. I've got the link to that and my gum road in the description if you want to check out some other projects. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm out.